Uh, Canada is grateful uh, to all uh, who have given uh, supplies to Canada. Canada is grateful to all those who have given. Hmm. Did Mexico give any? Did Luxembourg? How about South Sudan? I know North Sudan didn't. It? South Sudan. How about Chad? How about any of the stands? JFP, $10, would you agree that the CCP's motivation for the behavior is because they crave payback for the humiliations from the opium wars and the collapse of the Qing dynasty caused by the West? Well, I've heard some of that before, um, and I'm sure that the grievance history of China versus the West is taught. But I think you just have an ethnic nationalist government um, that is hyper-nationalist because that's part of the loyalty to the Communist Party. It deliberately tries to crush any other sort of affiliation, for example, to religion, whether it's Christian churches, Muslim Uyghurs, Falun Gong. It um, is industrializing. It wants to be a military power. It wants to expand again. There's so many psychological, strategic, national things going on there. Uh, and grievance is certainly one of them. Um, and it's always important for a dictatorship to have an external enemy to blame, to scapegoat. In the book 1984, it was always Emmanuel Goldstein, and we need to hate him, and he's, oh, uh, a factory was sabotaged, it's Emmanuel Goldstein. Um, a satellite launch blew up on the launch pad, oh, Emmanuel Goldstein, like there was some enemy that was always referred to. The dictatorships need that. Will the minister now do the right thing and on behalf of Canadians recognize the generosity of Taiwan and thank its government for that timely donation? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, as I said to you before, uh, Canada is grateful uh, to all uh, who have given uh, supplies to Canada. Uh, this is a common endeavour. We are thankful. We Canada is grateful to all those who have given. Hmm. Did... Mexico give any? Did Luxembourg? How about the island nation of Nauru? Fiji, Tonga, Samoa, St. Kitts and Nevis, Dominica. Did Moldova? How about South Sudan? I know North Sudan didn't. Did South How about Chad? How about any of the stands? Kazakhstan, Turkestan. Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, Azerbaijan, Uzbekistan. Do any of the stands? Canada is grateful to all the nations of the world who was given. Yeah, I think all both of the countries were China and Taiwan. Well, the United States sells us stuff all the time, so I'm assuming that I'm not even Canada. So basically, two countries in the world were grateful to all the nations. If El Salvador said, we will be grateful to El Salvador. You know, there's a tiny federation of Micronesia. There's a country called Kiribati. Well, let me show you another tweet I did today. I predict that at the end of this whole thing, go to my posted tweet, Justin, my pinned tweet. I predict, if I was wearing my panda prediction hat, that when this is all over, Justin Trudeau will seek asylum in China. I'm only half joking. How many retweets has that thing got since I put that up? 1.1 thousand likes. People are chuckling along. It ain't funny, though. I'm, jo I'm joking, of course, but only slightly, because I think that Justin Trudeau will try and leave Canada. He obviously finds it boring enough that he hasn't shaved or cut his fingernails. Uh, I think he wants to go to some sort of China-sponsored United Nations gig, whether it's at the World Health Organization or the UN General Assembly or whatever. He, maybe he thinks he can become Secretary General. That explains a lot of his bizarre affection for China when the rest of the world has come to despise the Communist Party. Do you want to go to that Angus Reid poll? I don't want to go too deep in this because I cover this in great detail tonight on my 8 p.m. show. But uh, Angus Reid, who's one of my favorite pollsters, simply because of the questions he asks, 
uh, are questions you're not supposed to ask. Obviously, the Liberal government has been polling like crazy during this whole fiasco, but they haven't released it. But if you go to Angus Reid, he said, Canadian opinions of China reached new low. And scroll down just the first item, the chart. There it is. Percentage of Canadians holding a favorable view on China. 14%. That's less than a third of what it was just three years ago, less than half of what it was a year ago. You can see in 2018, it was already starting to fall. And then they kidnapped the two Canadians and it plunged to 29%. And now they've infected the world and lied about it, 14%. I'm not gonna go through, there's a lot of great stats here. I'll go through them all at my, at my show at 8 p.m. Um, there's some great questions in there. Like, do you think Huawei should be allowed to build our 5G networks? Do you think we should increase trade with China? Oh, that number, I, I think it's 11%. It's just a great poll. I'll, I'll do that tonight. Frank Dino, Dino, five bucks. How much of Canada does China own? I heard that China is buying a gold mine. Can you give me that new Natsiak news? I think we showed this the other day, didn't we? Um, there's a, a strategic northern mine in Canada, gold mine, and uh, Shandong... Uh, gold just put in a $200 million bid for it, and apparently it's being approved. So basically, China flattens the world, crashes the economies, depresses the prices of everything, but because they're the only ones with the cash, look at that, Nunavut's Hope Bay Goldfield to be bought by China's Shandong Gold. We look forward to completion of the transaction opportunity to invest in the project for years. So we're just sort of selling our far north to China because... Trudeau couldn't be happier. I'm, I'm only surprised he didn't give it to China if, as a gift. William Hadrian, five bucks. There has to be a reason why he's locked in his home besides sheer laziness. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Um, first he said, oh, I, uh, maybe I should quarantine. because I mean, Look, Donald Trump and his staff get tested every single day. Boris Johnson actually got the cough, went to the ICU. He's back, he's working. There's no other world leader who's just hanging out at home watching Netflix, smoking pot, growing his fingernails really long, getting really, really weird. Oh, here's a news. You're so right. Um, hot soup, $5. U.S. has arrested another university professor for giving U.S.-funded research to China. Does ca Canada have traitorous thousand talents operatives too? I saw that story. There's so many cases that are coming to light in the United States. In Canada, we don't even prosecute. It's just ubiquitous. Years ago, a decade ago, the head of CSIS said there were 1,000 Chinese operatives in Canada. Almost all of them focused on industrial and technological espionage. You know, Canada used to have our version of Apple. We had a company called Nortel that at its height was worth hundreds of billions of dollars in stock market capitalization. It truly was a global player. They were hacked. Huawei stole all their secrets, and Huawei is basically built on the remains of Nortel. That's an excerpt from a daily live stream show that I do every day at 12 noon Eastern time. I talk about the stories of the day, play some fun videos, and most importantly, I take your questions and comments in what YouTube calls a super chat. If you like that, please tune in live. It's way more fun that way. You can join the conversation. And every day at 8 p.m., I have a special produced show with a whole monologue, and I interview guests, and I read my fan mail and my hate mail. You can learn more about both my daily live show and the nightly premium show at rebelnews.com.